Hey guys, Stripter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be breaking down the hip fire mechanics in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. The gameplay is going to be a little bit of just kind of random gameplay. I'm not really trying to hip fire too much because as you'll see, hip fire in Modern Warfare may be bugged, but in a much more minor way than recoil, and it's generally not a good idea most of the time. So I didn't want to just die over and over and over again getting this gameplay. Hipfire is going to be bad in Modern Warfare no matter what you attach to your weapon. There's no magical attachment that's going to make it better in my opinion, and we're going to get into why. And that why is because most weapons in Modern Warfare reach their maximum hipfire spread after three to five shots. The most common number is four, so for most weapons, after you've fired four bullets, you are at your maximum hipfire spread, and it is incredibly wide on some of these weapons, which means it takes no no time for you to be not hitting the broadside of a barn. And on top of that, hip fire changing attachments can improve this a little bit, but not by a significant amount. So I'm going to jump into a more live test and break this down frame by frame to show you what I'm talking about. The next bit is easier for me to show you inside my editing program than it is in the actual video itself. What I've done here is I've overlaid the same clip on top of itself twice, so in the upper left hand corner you can see the ammo countdown as the weapon fires, and this is just the scar. And I can go through frame by frame, and you can see the very first frame that it fires, the hip fire immediately gets crazy wide. Just look at the jump in hip fire right there. And as it continues to fire, it gets rapidly wider such that at about three shots fired, the crosshair is over the sights on the gun, which as I move through, it doesn't kick too much more over than that. And it's about as bad as it's going to get after three, maybe four shots on this weapon. So that's crazy bad. If Maybe my memory doesn't serve me correct, but I don't think it's supposed to get that bad in Call of Duty games. And just about every single weapon is this way. If we take a look at the scar again, but this time with the recoil reducing foregrip, well, the hip fire reducing foregrip, apologies, and the green laser, which should be the best two recoil attachments, it's not a ton better. Like, yeah, it starts off tighter, but as I fire, you can see it gets wider, wider, and we're going very slow here. We're at four shots, five shots, and at about six shots, it's already touching the sights on the gun again. And to be fair, since I've got these attachments, it's not going to get as wide as the others, but it, it hits its maximum in about six shots. It, it just gets crazy, crazy wide. And what that means is that even though I put these attachments on the gun, after a couple of shots, they're not very useful. All of the weapons that I tested performed the same as the SCAR, except the Uzi was significantly different. The Uzi was much better. It spread much slower. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the screen right now. It doesn't go crazy wide quite as fast, but it does reach it eventually. The next section of this in-depth episode talks about the actual size of the hipfire boxes, and the way I thought it would be best to measure that would be to record in the highest resolution possible on PC in the exact same spot and do it for every single weapon and every single attachment just like a whole ton of times so you can kind of see as I'm going through them here. Then I can load them up in Adobe Premiere and use the pixel ruler measuring tool which is consistent across zooms and everything and get an exact number of pixels of the size of the box. And my margin of error on this one is plus or minus five pixels because I kind of had to round up and down and it's very tiny to see anyway. And for my, fr I'm just gonna say P, five P is five pixels and then eventually I'll probably drop the P. I just want you guys to remember what it is that I'm talking about. And what I measured on this one was radius. The distance from the center, your center dot, to the edge of the hip fire box. So when I'm talking about minus or plus whatever percentages of hip fire, do keep in mind that's not exactly the same as total area because you'd have to put it in the pi r squared equation for a circle. So whatever reduction or gain that we get will be squared. And to keep the math incredibly simple for this episode, let's just say it's doubled the value. I know the mathematicians out there are crying, but for the non-mathematicians, that'll get people close. What I found is that the Kilo M4A1, SCAR M13, and AK, basically the full auto assault rifles, have the same base hip fire stat of 50 pixels when resting. And it scales to be the same when it's wide as well. It's basically 50 pixels. Resting is the easiest way to test this. The Odin, however, is wider at 80 pixels. The FAL is 110. 
and the FAMAS a surprisingly wide 120 pixels. I'm assuming this is because in our early playtest and in the beta, it was almost a shotgun when you hip-fired with it. So the FAMAS has pretty terrible hip-fire, more than twice as bad as the base assault rifles. Interestingly, the Kilo, M4, SCAR, M13, and AK were not changed at all by attaching the red laser sight or the Merc foregrip, which is supposed to tighten your hipfire accuracy. I got no measurable result from either of those attachments on the tighter, more full auto assault rifles. The green laser only dropped that group of assault rifles down to 45 pixels, so maybe not minus 10% radius, which is a much smaller change than what I was expecting. However, the other wider assault rifles are different, and I assume that they're weighted a little bit differently by weapon, and of course by scale, because they're wider. The Odin has a base of 80. When I put the red laser on it, I lost 12.5% and went down to 70. The green laser was 25%, down to 60 pixels in radius. So that the green laser definitely helped out the Odin. The same thing on the FAMAS, the base was 120, the red laser was 100, green laser was 90, and if I put the little Merc foregrip on there, then it was only 4% different. So that was that, that, that foregrip thing is very, very tiny. And what you guys are probably asking right now is what happens when you stack the Merc foregrip and a laser sight? And I'll have the answer for that question for you after this very important health PSA. Today's Astro Gaming sponsorship moment is actually a healthy PSA for the community. I am right now getting my flu shot, and both me and Astro Gaming would encourage you to also get a flu shot. You want to know why? Well, I prefer my fans not sick and able to watch videos, and Astro prefers their fans not sick and able to buy headsets with the discount link down there in the description. People that are lazy and don't take the flu shot and actually do get the flu and end up missing work for three or four days and having to go to the urgent care and spending God knows what money are going to be about $1,200 in the hole, which nobody wants to see. So guys, I want, to get, I want you to be healthy. I want you to get a flu shot, and I want you to take care of yourselves. So that's that's really, we're not selling headsets today. The whole message is just self-care. Awesome. This can get in as close as you want. So with this flu shot, I am going to stay healthy, and I'm going to be able to continue to do in-depth with no interruptions this fall, and I'm a lot less likely to get the flu. I also encourage you all to vaccinate as well. Vaccines are kind of important, you know, they help keep people alive. Just look up the Spanish flu. So yes, that was my sponsorship moment. I decided to use it to encourage all of you to get your flu shots, to get your vaccinations, and stay healthy because, believe it or not, even though I'm a horrible, evil, greedy snake of a human being and a YouTuber, which is worse than all of that stuff, I do actually care about you all and want you to be healthy. If you want to support me in this channel, the best way you can do it is click the link down there in the description and buy an Astro headset. And the second best way you can do it is just click the link so that my click-through rate is bananas and I look like a beautiful sponsor. So let's move on to what happens when you stack these two. And these are the stats for the FAL. And what you'll notice is that with the green laser and the grip, it drops down to 75 from the base of 110, which is about minus 32%, but that's exactly the same as adding the grip and the green laser percentages. Based on this and testing several other weapons, it showed an extremely similar pattern, and to the best of my ability to tell, the hipfire attachments appear to be additive and not multiplicative. So you can't just be like, it's minus 10% times minus 10%, kind of like, it's like a, I don't know, like an interest or something. Instead, it's just 10% plus 10%. They're very simple additive or subtractive things on your weapons, which is honestly, I prefer that. It just keeps the math easier for in-depth. When it comes to the Odin, the FR, and the FAL, in general, there's a little difference for each weapon, but you'll find that the red laser is minus 15%, the green laser minus 25, and the grip is minus five. Of course, if you add the grip and the green laser, it'll be just about minus 30%, depending a little bit on the weapon. When it comes to the Kilo, M4A1, M13, SCAR, and the AK, all the full auto assault rifles, the green laser only gets you minus 10% radius, which isn't as big as what I would have hoped for. Thankfully, submachine guns and light machine guns are a lot more consistent. They're a lot easier to wrap your head around. All submachine guns, except for the MP7, and that's every single one, has the same base radius of 70, the red laser is 60, the green laser is 55, and the Merc foregrip is 55. You will note that these are basically worse than some of the assault rifles, which in my opinion is kind of weird. If we go back in the episode, you'll see that the base for most of the full auto assault rifles was 50 pixels, and this is just worse. 
So that doesn't make any sense to me, and I don't think my measurements are that bad. There's definitely some human error component to it, but that that's kind of extreme, and it's kind of weird that my hip fire and my SMGs are worse than my rifles. When it comes to the MP7, it is slightly better. It's a base of 65, and if you put a red laser or grip or green laser or anything, it goes down to 55. So basically any laser will do on the MP7, so stick with the red one. And it's ever so slightly better, so slightly, that this is well within that plus or minus 5 pixels and human error range, so it may not even be different whatsoever. All SMGs had very fast shots to maximum spread, same as assault rifles, they got wide very quickly, except the Uzi. The Uzi uh, held that hip fire box much, much better than the other ones, but the Uzi fires really slow, so I can't say that's maybe the best hip fire weapon. I guess if you're going to kit it out with lasers and grips and stuff, it's among the better hip fire weapons, but it's still not the best time to kill, so I can't really recommend it. LMG is very simple, all of them had a base of 95, and when you add a grip and laser it follows the same pattern, drops it down to 70 or minus 27%, which is pretty close to that minus 30 that we talked about earlier, so all the attachments essentially work the same on them. And my end result, the summary at the end of this episode, is that hipfire attachments have minimal effect on most full auto weapons. They're not very impactful to be honest with you. Maybe some of the slower, bigger guns that have really wide hip fire so that they're not broken are helped by the lasers, but the ones that you actually want to hip fire with aren't. Almost every weapon is also going to have a faster time to maximum spread than what we're used to in other Call of Duty games, so hip firing them is not going to be fun, which is why you don't see many people hip firing in Modern Warfare. In my opinion, there is not really ever a good time to hip fire in Modern Warfare. Maybe if they're like literally right in your face, but you should be aiming down sights as much as possible in order to avoid this crazy wide inaccuracy. I'm assuming that this the, the hip fire getting really wide was intentional, but I'm assuming that the SMGs having not as tight as the assault rifles is not intentional. So it's kind of weird on that front. So kind of weird, but there is one thing that I know people have already wrote in the comments before they made it to the end of the episode. This is all of course except for shotguns. Some of the shotguns are okay to hip fire with. We covered that in the shotgun episode. Uh, they're better when you aim down sights. Lasers are good for them too, because even if they're not the most impactful of attachments, they can change your sprint out time. And any tighter hip fire spread is absolutely make or break on a shotgun. So even if they were like, two and three percent I would probably still recommend them so you can keep the lasers on the shotguns I really wouldn't bother with them on anything else guys that is all for this episode I hope that you enjoyed it I hope you learned something useful if you did don't forget to like favorite subscribe or buy one of the Astro C40 TR controllers drifter out so Jessica in your professional opinion as a nurse is it true that getting the flu shot makes your brain more susceptible to Huawei's 5g mind control race so that the Illuminati can make you buy more Mountain Dew no. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Because I was I was on the internet the other day, and this guy was saying he was perfectly healthy, and then he got the flu shot, and then BAM! His head exploded. How's he still getting <laughs> Well, I mean, do you, I, clearly you don't need a brain to leave comments on the internet, right? That's true. <laughs> so none of those things are true? Mm -hmm. So I won't get a horrible disease if I get a shot? No. Should people do this, or should they be terrified of it? I mean... Yes, you should get your flu shot. <laughs> it's okay to be terrified, but it doesn't, it's fine. It's better in the long run. Also, don't get it while you're sick. Don't get the flu shot when you're what sick. What happens if you get it while you're sick? Could make it worse. <laughs> it's available. Jessica, your dragon's gonna get healthy. Mm -hmm. We're gonna shoot you in the dragon. Ooh. Oh, look at that intense violence. Yay. Now the Illuminati has control of her brain. <laughs> wee, wee, wee. I don't have much one. That's okay. <laughs> they got a low value brain. Low value. Well, thank you so much. Make sure to flex the whole time. Don't do that. Don't no, don't why not? Flexing. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. You want me to crush the needle with my immense muscles? No, I'm not doing It's just not. It's just not good for like getting. Is it bad? Why is it bad when I flex? It's just the muscle, because you know you gotta give the shot into yeah, the muscle. Gotta, gotta relax. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I gotta relax. Okay. You want to like go right. into it. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. Okay. okay.